Welcome to my lecture online. Here we're going to try to find the roots of an equation. f of x equals x squared plus 3x minus 10. It's a quadratic equation, so it may have two roots. And we're not going to graph the equation so we don't know what it looks like. Notice I already prepared the board with some templates. I can go ahead and start this very quickly. And again, we're trying to find some numbers such that the remainder will be equal to zero. All right, so let's try, hmm. How about the number one? Okay, I drop down the first number. One times one is one. Add them together, I get four. One times four is four. Add them together, I get negative six. All right, I'm not too far away from zero. I don't know which direction I should go to get zero, so let's try the number two. And I drop down the one. Two times one is two. Add them together, I get five. Two times five, I get 10. Add them together, I get zero. Wow, there we go. Our first root, that is when x equals 2. So when x equals 2, I have a root because the remainder is 0. Hmm. So what happens when I keep increasing the numbers? What if I try the number 3? Because I'm, I went 1 to 2 to 3, I see what happens. I drop down the 1, 3 times 1 is 3, add them together at 6, 3 times 6 is 18, add together I get 8. So what from 0 to 8? I need to find the other 0. Well, let's try the number 4, drop down the 1, 4 times 1 is 4, add them together I get 7, 4 times 7 is 28, add them together I get 18. So notice I went from 0 to 8 to 18, that's not a good sign, I'm getting away from 0 and pretty quickly. Maybe I need to go in the other direction, how about try negative 1? Drop down the 1, negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, add it together I get 2, negative 1 times this is negative 2, add them together I get negative 12. Wow, that's not looking good. How about negative 3? I'll, I'll jump past negative 2. I'll try negative 3. Drop down the 1. Negative 3 times this is negative 3. Add them together, I get 0. Negative 3 times 0 is 0. Negative 10. Notice by going from negative 1 to negative 3, I got closer to 0. So it looks like I'm going in the right direction. So I need maybe try a few more. Negative 10. And uh, let's all jump all the way to negative 5. Because... I went from negative 12 to negative 10. That didn't get me close to zero quickly, so maybe I'll skip negative 4 and go to negative 5. I drop down to 1. Negative 5 times 1, that's negative 5. Add them together, negative 2. Negative 5 times negative 2 is a positive 10. Add it together, get 0. And that was the correct value. So when x equals negative 5, I have the second root. So when x equals 2, when x equals negative 5, that's the location where this function has the two roots. So you can see that it's kind of a little bit of a game. You try some numbers and you see what the tendency is. I went from negative 6, tried the second number to 0. Bang, I was lucky there. Right away I found the first root. I kept going in that direction and I began to realize that no, I probably will not find the next root because the numbers are diverging from 0 pretty quickly. Let's go in the other direction. So I end up with a negative 12, end up with a negative 10. I skipped negative 2, I skipped negative 4 because it wasn't getting close to 0 fast enough, so I wanted to hurry it up a little bit, went to the next uh, number, skipped negative 4 to negative 5, and there it is, I found the other root. So that's kind of the way you can use synthetic division to find the roots. True, there's many other ways to find the roots of an equation. We've learned lots of those already in previous chapters, but it's nice to see how synthetic division can actually help you pretty quickly to find the roots as well as far as evaluating functions and as well as uh, making it easier to do long division. And that is how it's done. It's hard to guess if you have a fraction what the roots are. So that's a good observation. What if it's a fraction? <laughs> <laughs> what if it's an imaginary number? Obviously, there are limits to this method. This method only works if you have whole numbers, if you have integers to work with. If you have fractions, sometimes you can actually kind of narrow down to the fraction through a set of iterations, but then it be doesn't become so useful uh, to do it in this particular fashion. I would then probably just go to the quadratic equation.